Decent cross as well. And then on the volley, how about that from Chloe Ball? Face to work with here, and this is Ball. Oh, that's a wonderful hit. Ball O'Connor! Yes! At the double to make it 2-0 for Crystal City. I actually started playing when I was like three or four years old. I got two brothers and a dad that's mad into football. I joined the football team when I was five. Um, in like an under sevens in my brother's team, I think. For me, like Wales women weren't really like on the TV. So it was quite hard for me to watch Wales women or even just women's football in general. Well, I can't remember watching female football when I was younger, to be honest. I just wasn't really exposed to it. I didn't start playing until I was like 10. Um, I remember not wanting to. In person, there was like, I can, you know, I know girls now who come up here, some of the younger ones, just to watch us play. And there was nothing like that. So I came here on an open day and I seen the facilities. Um, I think I met Kerry Harris when I was here and she was telling me all about the football um, and I kind of knew this was the place for me to be. I was thinking this morning, I can, I can remember meeting Chloe. Um, you know, she was still very smiley, very bubbly, very Welsh. <laughs> you know, there's an element of confidence with Chloe because I think she had her Swansea tracksuit on at the time because she was playing for them. So um, that was a bit of a bold move coming into Cardiff Met when we're you know, big rivals of each other. Like for me to even get the chance to play with her, but I used to just watch her and just be like, I, coming up against her was the worst. Like she just so technically good and just, she was always very positive. She was young, she was fresh, she was left footed, which at the time was invaluable to us. Um, she had a good you know, profile at the time in terms of her experience with Swans, and you, you could tell how technically capable she was. You know, one of them teammates you could rely on as well. Like, I, I can't remember having a bad game. Um, and yeah, just a great team player. And without her, we wouldn't have won, you know, the trophies that we did, so. We first met in uni, we were in the same halls together. Uh, on the same course. We were friends for just over a year before we started seeing each other. Um, so I think that was a good way to start. She was, you know, a good laugh. Uh, didn't really take herself too seriously. And obviously living together um, with a bunch of other people, it was, it was, it was good fun, so. they have kind of been the posh and becks of, of, of Cardiff Met, so uh, yeah. we're a great couple together and, um, you know, make each other very, very happy and, and Chloe dotes on him and, and vice versa. Um, we were dead chuffed for her when, when they announced it and um, you know, it, it, it looked like a really special occasion so we were really pleased for her. I just thought I had a bad back. I literally just thought, oh, um, you know, I've got a bit of a tight muscle in my back, it'll be fine, give it a couple of weeks, it'll be fine. Carried on playing, carried on training. And I just remember after training and even games, I would go to drive home and I would have to sit in my car and wait about half an hour for the pain to go. And I've never felt pain like it. And I think it went on for quite a while uh, and it just seems to be getting worse and worse. So I carried on playing um, for a silly reason, to be honest, I should have stopped. But I carried on playing thinking it was nothing, thinking it would go over time, but it never did. She got to a point where she couldn't play anymore and she couldn't do, start doing general things. That's when she just thought, I'll have a rest and we'll sort of see how it goes. But it, it didn't seem to get better, it got worse. I went to three different physios just to get advice. 
three of them told me three different things that it could be, um, which was quite frustrating. And then I, I went to a different physio then and he said, you need to go and get a scan straight away. Um, and there was me thinking that it'd probably be something small, something like a muscle injury. And for me, the worst thing, the worst thing it could have been was like a slip disc or a disc bulge. That's all like, I, I actually thought it could have been. And then um, I just remember I had the call to go back into the hospital to have my results from that scan. And he sat me down and I was with my, my husband now. Um, just us two were sitting there listening to him and he basically said we have found something on his spine. Um, I remember sitting like it was yesterday, having the, the specialist there telling us you know, that they found something and potentially we had, we had to think of the worst. Um, they weren't really sure what it was at the time, but there was a big um, big piece showing up on the scans on the spine. So that was really hard to take. And yeah, he, he was chatting to us and he was saying that you kind of need to think of the worst here. When he was chatting to me, I kind of like blanked out and I don't really remember the chat if I'm honest. Um, and then I didn't actually hear from him for about four or five weeks after, which in a way it was good because obviously no news is good news. But obviously every single day it was on my mind. Uh, and that wait was really tough because we weren't really sure what was going on. And then yeah, I had a, I had a letter through the post say come in to get your results from all these scans. Um, and I just remember it was the worst day of my life. Well, it wasn't the worst day of my life, but it was just very um, scary and I was very anxious to go. And he sat us down and he said, uh, it's good news, um, it's not cancerous, it's benign. I just remember like my mum and, and Kira, my husband, he, they were just like hugging me and just saying like, God, we just can't believe it. Like it's, it's obviously good news. And they were just like crying and stuff. And it was, it was obviously nice because it wasn't anything dangerous, but also I knew I had to go through a big operation to get rid of what it was. They obviously explained to us that it wasn't cancerous, but she then had to go through a, a sort of big operation to get it removed because it was so close to her spinal cord. Um, and I did ask him how long until I can play football again. Um, and he said six months. Which we, we didn't think, you know, particularly after how serious it was, um, that was a long time. But unfortunately it did, there were complications with the surgery and it did take a lot longer for, for Chloe to get back to where she, you know, was before. Uh, a year down the line from when she had a surgery, uh, we were on holiday and we literally couldn't walk, you know, longer than 10 minutes without so having to stop and, and, and sort of lie down because her back was still really hurting her. I was, you know, I, I couldn't walk for a long time, uh, never mind run. Um, I had to have 24 7 care for about a month. I think my mum my mum took off and it would leave um, to look after me for about a month. Um, because my independence just went, I couldn't do anything by myself. So it, it got to a point where, you know, she, she I'm, I'm sure she didn't really feel like she was ever going to be able to play football again, let, let alone just doing simple things around the house without being in pain. I think when we were on our holiday, it was just before lockdown, you know, having that time in lockdown, she sort of said to me, look, whatever pain I'm, I'm in, I'm going to try and push through it. So she started literally walking, trying to beat her time every time and then eventually got into running and, and literally within sort of three three months somehow she was doing like 10 k's and it, it, it was it was quite surreal really from from where she'd come from i just stayed as positive as i could you know there's so many people out there that that are told every single day that they have cancer and i was just so lucky that i wasn't one of those people and because at that time like my life turned upside down um and it was good news for me. At the back of my head, of course, I always wanted to go back to play football. I didn't know how long it would take me to go back. Um, and yeah, I decided to go back to Cardiff Met then. you see during Covid and um, there were so many like inspirational stories where people had lost weight or people had like done achievements that they didn't think they could achieve um, and she was one of those Covid success stories. I was a university student at the time I kind of met and I was looking for like a feature story and like I was like oh, Chloe Ball's been really doing well so the article was uh, like no ordinary footballer Chloe Ball like from what she was saying to me that she used that Covid period um, to get herself back um, fighting fit. She sort of just said to herself that she was going to enjoy it and imagine if it, 
it was her last sort of game every time she went on the field. And I think that's why like, I played with such freedom and I played with such confidence that I wasn't afraid to make any mistakes because I obviously didn't care what other people thought of me because I was just loving football at that time. I, I didn't know if I was going to be fit enough, I didn't know if I was going to be strong enough. I looked at her story and I thought like, wow, this is an incredible story. Like she's come from like not being able to walk like properly and then she's going in there and she's easily like being one of the best players on the pitch and like this is amazing for like a player that like hasn't played like for a good few years, had to take time out and now just makes her look easy like on her return. Like that season was phenomenal and, and all the girls put in such a shift. Like I said, like, I've never seen her have a bad game. But like she was one of them players who was so consistent that like if the, she wasn't there, not that you'd be like, oh we're going to lose, but you would have doubts in your mind, you know. Um, yeah, I remember a game against Britain Ferry, she scored an absolute worldie, so standard from Chloe O'Connor to be fair. I didn't know, to be honest. Um, during the season, I had no idea. Um, I think a couple of games, I seen Lauren Smith here just watching our games, but didn't, didn't think anything of it. And then, yeah, I got the call in June from Lauren to say, would you like to join us? Um, and I was like, yeah, of course. Is it part-time? And she was like, no, it's full-time football. And I said, no, not chance. Like, that's, a, that's absolutely amazing. Like, I couldn't believe it. Um, for me to like grow up but not actually see women's football as a job, to then be offered it um, as a job was just unbelievable and I, I couldn't, I just, yeah, it was, it was unreal. You know, had a great season with us and, and, and then moved on, which, you know, some clubs, they might be a bit of bad feeling with, with that, but it, it's not. You've got to look at the player and, and look at what they deserve and, and what they're aspiring to be. And, it also looks good on us as well because these players are coming out of our system. We are at the top now in Wales. Like you know, there's not really much more, much else you can do. And everyone who I've spoke to, or everyone who I've seen go further, it is through moving, moving on. And, and I'm like obviously Chloe was a bit older, um, and I think if it was going to happen, it was going to happen then, and she deserved to go. So I'm so I'm so happy for her, and I'm glad she did. But. Um... Chloe Ball's easily adapted to life uh, in the Women's Championship. I think it took a bit of time because she was recovering from an injury um, when she did join Bristol City. She was kind of like just replicating what she did at Cardiff, but she was dictating the play and she was controlling um, the Bristol City midfield. And I still think that she'll be a big part of Bristol City's women's teams going forward. And if she can um, get promoted with Bristol City into WSL, then that's only going to do her the world of good. Yeah. Um... And like I said, like I think for me, it's just playing with a smile on my face and just enjoying it. And I think if I'm if I do that, I know my performance will come out. Um, and yeah, that's why that's why I, I loved last year at Bristol, and hopefully I'll I'll have a, another good season this year. It was actually a Saturday, and we had a game in Durham on the Sunday away to Durham. So we were travelling that Saturday um, and we had training first and I was just like, went into training in Bristol, put my bags down, walked to the gym to just do some stretching and stuff. Gemma called me, Gemma Granger called me and I missed it. Um, I had a missed call off her <laughs> and then she texted me and said like, hi, it's Gemma, can you give me a call? And I thought, oh, I can't, I can't train now and then ring, I have to, tr I have to ring her now um, before training because I, I had a good feeling that it was going to be good news. Yeah, I called her, uh, I called her back and she said, you know, we'd like to invite you in. Um, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. And then I got off the phone and I rang, I rang my hus husband straight away. And I honestly, I just said to him, like, I've been chosen to, pick for, uh, to go to the Wales camp tomorrow uh, out in Pinata in Spain, and I just cried. You know, it was just, I think, a wave of emotions for her, really. She, she was absolutely over the moon, and I think we, we both were Having seen what she'd gone through, for her to be playing for Wales again was probably something she never dreamed of. I think because everything I went through um, and all the hard work that I put in to get to that point, um, yeah, it was, it was just an amazing feeling. I think somebody like Chloe is always aspiring to be better, is always aspiring to, to get to the next step. She doesn't get stale. Um, she's always looking for the next challenge and Chloe got the opportunity she, she rightly deserved.